Hi, I'm Andrew Rodriguez, and welcome to Psycho Bible, babbling about psychology and theology. This past week, June 9th, 10th, and 11th, was the 10th annual Restored Hope Network Conference, Hope 2022, held at the Ridgecrest Conference Center in Black Mountain near Asheville, North Carolina. It was beautiful. And for me, the theme of the conference was reunion and reconciliation. Why is that? For several reasons. Uh, for one, apparently, Exodus held several conferences at this Ridgecrest Conference Center, as well as Hope for Wholeness would normally hold their conferences there. So for a lot of the old timers, a lot of the veterans in this field, it was kind of like homecoming for them. Uh, I was watching uh, Gary Ingram uh, share a video. Uh, he was at the auditorium and he was reflecting on how that was the very spot where he proposed to his wife. And so there's a lot of history there for people who've been involved in either Exodus or that Restored Hope Network or Hope for Wholeness. And so it brought back a lot of memories for other people. Now for me, this is my third Restored Hope Network conference. And as far as I know, this was the first time Restored Hope Network had done a conference at Ridgecrest. Because for the most part, the Restored Hope Network conferences were held at churches. So everyone had to stay in hotels. And then the past two years were virtual. And so more and more, people were starved for getting together and really spending a lot of time together and in community and catching up, enjoying each other's company. And so this time we were able to spend all that time together and eat together, enjoy meals, hang out. And it was in a beautiful place in the Smoky Mountains. I, I couldn't stop taking photos. Just take a look at some of these shots I took. I couldn't get enough. It was, it was gorgeous. Now, like I said, this was my third conference ever. I never had been to an Exodus conference before it shut down, and so this is my third RHN conference. Nevertheless, the more I'm in this community as a counselor, as an advocate for the rights of people leaving the LGBT, and as a brother of a prodigal, the more I feel like family. Like, that's the thing I just couldn't stop thinking about as the conference was winding down and I'm on my way home. I just, I feel like I belong. Which is weird for someone to say who, some people call me an ever straight. I don't even like using the term straight, gay, whatever. They're, those are arbitrary uh, or just false social constructs. But as someone who does not have a same-sex attraction background, for me to find community, to find my place in this, in this sphere, it might be strange to some, but for me, I think the reason I feel so, uh, such a connection, such a, a sense of belonging is because you really will not find a more authentic group of people than in this community. Not just authentic in that they're sharing struggles, but authentic in that they are now living out. You know, some at various stages of change and healing and growth and maturity, but they are living out the authentic self. They are taking hold of that which God has for them in sexual reintegration. There's another reason I would say that the theme was reunion and in particular reconciliation. And that is something I found out the first day of the conference. There was a surprise guest in attendance. I could say this publicly because it was already shared publicly, but that guest was Rosaria Butterfield. And when I heard some of the conversations others were having with her, uh, because she was only there Thursday, and I didn't get a chance to meet with her. I really wanted to go up and introduce myself. From what I heard, God is doing something. Now, if if you're unaware, Rosaria Butterfield, most known for her book, um, Confessions of an Unlikely Convert. Uh, she's a 
former professor and uh, LGBT activist, like a radical lesbian feminist, I think, uh, back in the day, and then had a, a powerful conversion to Christ, and uh, she's very well known in evangelical circles, especially among uh, Protestants and Calvinists and the Reformed types. And so she's written some books, and she has a lot of influence with, say, Beckett Cook and Christopher Yuan. And I recently did a video about her and Christopher Yuan and their attacks against the ex-gay ministry field and Exodus, and now, essentially, Restored Hope Network, since most of the ministries that were part of Exodus are part of Restored Hope Network. And Christopher Yuan in particular, but also Rosario Butterfield, have been very critical of these ministries. And so I re just recently, about a month ago, did a video responding to those criticisms, which I believe are mostly unfounded and based off uh, uh, some s strange rationale or off of straw men and misinformation. And I, I came in pretty strong in that video. But my heart has always been to see those who hold to a true truly authentic Christian sexual ethic, like those in her stream of uh, what we call the renounce column or the uh, mortification stream, who are pretty much are in agreement with those of us in the transformation or rebuild area when it comes to how the church addresses uh, same-sex attraction and gender identity uh, confusion or discordance. I, my heart has always been to see unification to just go the extra step and yes we're in agreement that repentance is essential and really at the core of what we're teaching but we also believe in transformation and the hope of it and that there are things we can proactively do to to aid in that process and i i just have longed to see us be allies not not squabbling or having some sort of civil war amongst ourselves and so my appeal has always been please see the truth come together with us come to our conferences and to see her there just it when people were telling me the stories about the conversations they were having it tears were welling up because I'm starting to see something happening so I don't want to share too much because it's not my place to share but since I did see her there, these are my thoughts I'm having about just seeing her there. Uh, you know, she sat right up front, front and center, and I was off to the far right, and I could see her face during the, the different speakers. She was only there day one, but I'm quite glad she was there for that day because there were some really good presentations that first day. And so just it stirred in me hope for seeing uh, the church unite when it comes to this issue. And that first keynote address on day one, on Thursday the 9th, was by board member Jeff Simons from Tower of Light Ministries. And it was the perfect initial keynote address because all he did was explain what the journey looks like. And he pretty much, in just very clear terms and in a gentle tone, explained the message that Exodus and then Restored Hope Network have taught, have always taught, and still teach. Right at the outset, he spoke to strugglers and made it very clear that God loves you deeply. And then he explained how the thing that is required of us is repentance, which is surrendering your heart to him and pursuing holiness. And he, I love how he says this next. He said, there are people who want to have an emotional relationship with God. They want to live life on their terms, but still love God like it have in an emotional way. But God calls us to love him in action, not just with our emotions. So you cannot say, I love God, but then disobey him. But at the same time, God knows we will mess up. And because he loves you deeply, there is unlimited grace for you. And God isn't judging us for our attractions that we haven't chosen. He makes it very clear that attraction becomes sin 
when we give in to the temptation to sexualize people or envy their features, which is what we teach all the time, that there's, we use as a short term same-sex attraction, but really what we're referring to is same-sex sexual attraction or same-sex eroticization or same-sex lust. But to be simply drawn towards someone, to, to notice an attraction to someone may not necessarily be sexual. It could be oftentimes, and really at the core of it, what we find is there's some other emotional need being uh, ignited or at the root to this disordered desire, this disordered attraction. And then he makes clear that transgender feelings become sin when you begin to identify as the sex that you are not. I would say identify as the opposite sex, but now we also have to account for those who identify as non-binary. Both of those are rejections of your true sex. And he just makes it very clear that the biblical prohibitions are against behavior, not feelings. And he addressed how some people make the mistake of making the primary goal complete change in feelings and uh, acquiring a marriage rather than making the primary goal repentance and seeing those things as potential outcomes that may or may not happen. And so he uses this illustration, which everyone just loved. Everyone, came, So many people came up to him and told him, that's a perfect illustration. So he said, the first step is containment of your passions. We want to get it from being a wildfire to contain it to a fireplace. And understand that beneath the, those passions and those desires and those attractions, there, there are root issues. And God really wants to heal those root issues of brokenness, brokenness in our our identity, in our view of ourselves, and our view of others, our view of God, uh, emotional wounds. And as God heals those root issues, the fire dies down. For some, completely. But even for those who, for whom it dies down completely, there may still be conditions that cause the fire to flare back up, perhaps for a season, or if not tended to pervasively. And as the fire dies down, it opens up the possibility of opposite sex attraction to rise up. And there may be more healing regarding opposite sex relationships than, that is then needed. And he makes it very clear that we neither promise nor deny the development of opposite sex attraction for anyone. God can do anything and the degree of one's healing and growth, we cannot predict. And I love this other thing he, he mentioned, that you can live without sex, but you cannot live without intimacy. And it's so important that we have these truly open and vulnerable but affirming relationships in our lives. And I guess that's, that's part of why I love being in this community so much. I can be totally open about my own sexual struggles as someone without same-sex attraction, as well as struggles I've been through, uh, brokenness, wounds from my life, the wounds of loneliness and rejection that so many of the people in this field can already relate to. And it's, it just fills that void, and that's really what we ought to be doing. It's not just I'm there to minister to them, but uh, as I unite with others in this field, most of them other ministers, uh, we find commonality, and we we strengthen each other. So that was just simply the perfect keynote address to open up the conference. Jeff, thank you for your obedience in, in presenting it. And then that night of day one, uh, Tamika Sanders from Coming Out Incorporated, uh, she gave a, a message called Being Rooted and Grounded in Love. And her hashtag, Uproot That Thing. <laughs> so she used a... Uh, an object lesson using a plant and showing how there are roots that lead up to the fruit and uh, just did a really good job. It was very practical and once again it just falls right in line with everything we've always, ta always taught that whether it's sexual addiction or same-sex attraction or um, promiscuity or all sorts of other uh, behavioral issues 
These are all fruit of deeper issues that are underlying. And we can think that, well, what we need to do is just cut out the fruit. But they could grow back. You've got to do the work of digging out the roots. And so that was just well put and will stick in a lot of our heads. <laughs> All the uh, gardeners in the audience were were <laughs> quite amused with as as she did the exercise, the uh, the uh, illustration, um, and some of the uh, struggles she had on stage with the plants you know, because she's not a gardener herself. So it, was, it actually it really helped uh, as everyone just understood what she was trying to say with it. There were just so many good workshops. In fact, there's too many good workshops, and we only get to choose three of them. So I wish I could multiply myself and check out multiple workshops. I chose to go to Jim Kasuda's workshop on attachment, because that's an area I've been studying a lot lately. And I, it was great. I only knew Jim from uh, online. We're Facebook friends. And I had spoken to him on the phone before, pick his brain about a couple things. So to actually meet him in person was quite a privilege. And then I caught the last five minutes of Linda Seiler's workshop explaining the five streams. So if you're if you watch my channel, you may be familiar with the four columns uh, of the different views within the church regarding LGBT issues or same sex attraction and gender uh, transgender issues. And that was developed by Jason Thompson from Portland Fellowship. And so I referenced that in a lot of my videos. And basically what Linda Seiler did is she kind of revamped that. And instead of calling them columns, she calls them streams because, and that's a pretty, pretty good idea because there are people that sort of, it's not very clear which column they're in. They can sort of go back and forth. Some of the streams flow together in some ways. But also she decided there's, we are missing one of the uh, areas, and that would be the condemnation stream. For those that we often don't like to acknowledge, but they're still part of the church, such as like the Westboro Baptists and others who just look to bring hate and bigotry and condemnation for, to those with same-sex attraction or gender confusion. So they do deserve their own column be, or stream because they're, they don't fit the four columns that the uh, Portland Fellowship chart has. And instead of naming them you know, uh, Revel and Resist, Renounce, Rebuild, she just names them based on what the different streams really do regarding same-sex attraction and transgender issues. So yes, the one is just condemnation. Then you have the pro-gay, gay revisionist side, which is affirmation. And then there is um, accommodation, which would be like the side B gay Christians who, uh, the revoicers, the uh, what we used to call the resist column. They still identify as LGBT, but they uh, acknowledge the sexual ethic of the church that uh, marriage is for one man and one woman, okay? But they still hold to a gay identity, and they're trying to essentially accommodate those who are coming from an SSA background but uh, don't want to go through a deeper process of change and uh, truly surrendering their identities to God. And then instead of renounce column, uh, the conservative Protestants and other Catholics I know of that as well that fit the uh, renounce column, she's naming the mortification column, where the emphasis is primarily on mortifying the flesh, on mortifying sinful desires, and focusing on repentance, which we so much agree with, those of us in the rebuild column, or are now, she's calling the transformation stream, we agree with them so much, but we just ask them to go a bit further and understand there's more to it than just having a sinful nature, that there, there are developmental contributors to the struggle itself, and, and ways in which God wants to heal those root issues, and bring about further growth and transformation, and that this process is, is continuing. It's not a once and done thing. We're not prosperity gospel preachers like we're often accused of being, but we really do believe that there is more than just the repentance and becoming uh, saved from God's wrath, but also that there is hope of renewal 
and living out the new identity that we have in Christ. Then I attended a workshop by one of my regular viewers of my channel, Steve Goebel, as he was being interviewed by his friend, Counselor Bob Brennan, about his own journey of faith through gender development. And he basically was able to share his story and show how it applied to our understanding of, of sexual and gender identity development throughout childhood and, and adolescence. Another highlight, I got to meet Julie Hamilton. I first heard her speak at the Resort Hope Network conference in 2015, my first conference ever, right when I was being sacked in graduate school. And I did a video about her winning her case against a therapy ban in 2020. And she spoke again this year to explain the latest research and, and to uh, give a teaching on the developmental model of same-sex attraction and gender identity. So it was pretty much the same sort of speech as she gave in 2015, but a bit more updated with some of the latest research. And so it was great to actually meet her for the first time in person. And then the keynote on Saturday was Dr. Paul Hrues, an endocrinologist explaining the science behind the transgender movement and medicine. Now, I've heard a lot of this stuff before, but it's always just appalling to see the damage that's being done to the bodies of these individuals, especially children who are being put, being put on puberty blockers and then cross-sex or really wrong-sex hormones and then undergoing surgeries to remove uh, their, their genitalia or their gonads, their, their breasts, and see the changes that their body go through, which are oftentimes irreversible. And to complement what he was sharing, Laura Perry shared her story, both as a testimony and then also when he did his workshop, with, which was more of a Q&A, she tag-teamed with him. Now, Laura Perry works for First Stone Ministries, and uh, she just recently released her book, Transgender to Transform, sharing her story. She went through pretty much the whole transition process, and then God got a hold of her, and she went through... Uh, a process of detransition, which is still undergoing in some ways, but she just praised God because God has shown up in some miraculous ways in some of her her um, detransitioning, coming back more into her true sex and some of those characteristics being restored again, like her voice. She was told that her voice would never go back to normal, and it's almost there. Thank God. So, um, it was great to, to have both of them sharing it uh, simultaneously or back to back and I got to pick Dr. Hruz's brain just a little bit because I've had some ideas about the nature of how we determine sex so I'll be doing a video on that at some point. And speaking of testimonies, there are just so many of them, such a variety. You had people who were coming out of same-sex attraction, of transgenderism or both. You had parents and loved ones of people and some of them, their children are still prodigals, still lost, and they're still hoping and praying for their return. You had others who just are involved in the ministry in some way, sharing their story about how they got involved in this. So we had Jean and Anita, Anita Eggman, who uh, just, they're, they're parents of a, of a son who is uh, living homosexually and still a prodigal, and just they shared what they've learned through that process, how they've had to go through some degrees of transformation so that God did a work in their hearts so that God willing, when their son returns, they are in a place where they're ready to receive his, him and, uh, and really be the, the best parents they could be for him and how they've, they've used their own hurt to then minister to others in a support group. Uh, so what they shared just resonated with me and I don't think there's a dry eye when they're sharing. Uh, Laura Perry, like, like I said, I got to hear her speak and get her to sign my book. Uh, Michael Newland shared his story. And I know him from the ReStory Zoom calls that we do, or Friends of ReStory. And ReStory, if you're not familiar with them, they're a ministry uh, that was created not, not too long ago to resource and equip the Assemblies of God to address the LGBT issues. And so he was the executive director, and so he shared his testimony. And then Pastor Bob Stith 
shared his testimony. And he was just an unlikely ally to the ex-LGBT. He shared, I mean, he's, he's aged and he's been in this field for a long time, but here he is, he's coming from the Southern Baptist Convention, and he had no interest of serving in this field and associating with these ex-gays. But God started leading him to investigate what is going on with these ex-gay stories I'm hearing about, these strugglers. Going back to when Exodus was around, so back in the 90s, he, he investigated. And he just shared his memories of his involvement in this field. And it resonate, resonated with me quite a lot as someone who does not have an SSA background, but God sort of led me into working with guys who struggle in this area. And one of the things he shared was after working with guys struggling with same-sex attraction, a bunch of them asked him one time, so what do you think of us? And I love what he said. I believe you're fighting a battle you haven't asked for, and the church has failed you, and the world wants you to accept it. And to me, you're my heroes. And that's how I feel whenever I'm with this crowd. You guys, fighting against the tide, even when the church has not always had your back, and will often tell you, just identify as gay. You, all right, okay, you can be gay. It's okay to be gay. Just don't act on it. Or, or just condemns you. Or tells you that to pursue uh, healing and growth is a, a, a fool's errand. And the world is constantly telling you you're, you're denying your true self. You're, you're going back in the closet. All these messages from the world. And oftentimes the church now is echoing the world. When you're standing on the truth, the truth of who you really are, against all tides, that's courageous. That's heroic. You guys have blazed a trail. And I'm just so blessed to be in your presence and to glean from you guys and, and uplift you guys as much as I can. God spoke to me in some very clear ways at this conference. I said the theme for me was reunion and reconciliation. And I've said in previous videos, if you watch my channel, that my heart's desire is to see the church united. That's what I've always felt. Ever since I was a young kid, I, I wasn't, I'm not a denominational guy. I, I'm not loyal to any particular denomination. It's always bothered me that we have so much division in the church. And so it's always been my desire to see the church united. I believe that's going to be necessary in certain ways. May not fully, like there will be no more denominations. But at our core, to be united. And I believe that's going to be necessary to endure the end times. This vision I have got confirmed when I was in high school. And my pastor called me up. My pastor didn't know me that well. He called me up and he had a prophetic word for me that I would be involved in some sort of ministry that would unite the church. And he struggled. He was like... But it's not as a pastor. He couldn't put his finger on it. It's like, you won't be, a, it's not as a pastor, but in some way you'll be involved in a ministry that unites the church. And I just, it, it was confirmed in my spirit. I didn't know what that was going to be, though. Like, how, how would that look? I just knew that I've always had a heart for seeing the church united. And when I went to my first Restored Hope Network conference, I got a taste of that vision. I saw how the ex-gay ministries are really, they're all about reconciliation and reintegration. We're sharing the gospel of reconciling the world to God through Jesus Christ. We're seeing families reconciled. We're seeing male and female reconciled. We're seeing people reconciled to their true sex, their true gender. And we're seeing healing as people reintegrate their mind, will, and emotions, their body, mind, and spirit, their body, soul, and spirit, as all of those become whole. That's why we call it sexual integrity. It's wholeness. And from there, we have a place to stand strong against the tides. But even in this movement, 
I still see some divisions, in particular between the therapy world and the ministry world. Uh, and that came up in several conversations I had. For example, I've, I've heard some people say that sometimes they feel like those of us who are therapists disparage ministry approaches. Like, well, no, no, we're not doing conversion therapy, but those sort of lay ministries and those that they're not really well trained, they're not, you know, professionally trained therapists, those are the conversion therapists. They're, they're the ones doing conversion therapy. But I've seen it thrown out the other way among the, the ministries saying, no, 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 those, the legislation, they took advantage of the fact that legislation was only for licensed counselors, those different therapy bands. See, no, no, they're the conversion therapists, not us. We're just doing pastoral care. And we're just ministering to people with the Bible. And sometimes with the Holy Spirit, we're, we're just dealing with the spiritual issues. And so it's oftentimes this sort of, no, 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 the hot potato. Like, no, we're not the conversion therapists. You guys are. No, no, no. And that's why my platform, Psycho Bible, is where I babble about psychology and theology. My heart is to bridge that gap between ministry and therapy, between the spiritual and the psychological. Also, as a non-denominational Christian, I envision, and, and actually I see the manifestation to an extent, a reconciliation between different streams in Christianity. As if you watch my videos, you know I, I talk about so much Catholicism. You would think I'm a Catholic, but I'm not. <laughs> and also Orthodox Christianity. Uh, but I'm, I'm still Pentecostal. I'm, I, but I don't really like calling myself Protestant because I don't like identifying myself by what I'm against. I just really want to, I want to truly be a mere Christian. I have my involvement in just so many different streams in the church, in the AG with Restory Ministries and with counseling at a Assemblies of God uh, University, uh, involved in different Pentecostal communities, uh, the big evangelical world in general, Catholicism, especially with my uh, training in theology of the body, with orthodoxy and the symbolic world. So I don't know what it'll look like, but I want to see the church and those different streams that really are uh, preserving the core of what Christianity is, I want to see us come together. And I see that happening when I'm with Restored Hut Network because we're an interdenominational ministry. And especially I see it when I do things with Living Waters because we have, it's so ecumenical in the best sort of term. I love seeing us come together. I think it's through the issue of sexual reintegration that we will also see the church reintegrate and reintegrate properly based on truth not on compromise so i don't know exactly what that looks like but i know it's in this type of ministry where god is bringing mere christians together to protect and nurture members of the body that must be treated with special honor so that's just my roundup or uh my rundown of the Restored Hope Network's Hope 2022 conference. If you attended, please let me know in the comments what what your takeaways were. And I hope to see you at the next one, which will be virtual. We're going to go alternating, which I actually like because it gives, gives me the ability to save up more money to go to the next in-person conference. And also allows more people who can't afford to go to a conference to, to still participate. So I hope to see you there, whether online or in person at the next conference. And whether you're an SSA struggler or not, you could just be like me who just wants to serve this community and, and get to know more about what really happens in this world, in this X game ministry world. As much as I don't like that term, X game ministry, <laughs> but we, we haven't found a better one yet that's, that is stuck. So I hope to see you involved. I hope to see you lifting up this community of, of believers, of overcomers. All right. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, know that in Christ, you are deeply loved by God. Take care.